This is definitely one of the most important equations you will ever study in your life. The left side represents the curvature of the manifold, and the right side the distribution of matter in it. It is called Einstein's equation, or Einstein field equations, since there is more than one. And this manifold is often described as the space-time around us. If you want to know what a manifold is, we linked this video in the description. You don't need to know its precise definition for this video, but just to give you the intuition behind it, think of a manifold as a shape or surface that can be stretched and bent, but looks flat if you zoom in close enough. For example, the surface of the Earth is a curved 2D manifold, but it feels flat when you are standing on it. In this context, the space-time is a 4D manifold that describes the stage where everything happens. From the mathematics point of view, general relativity is just a combination of differential geometry, tensor calculus, topology, algebraic geometry, Lie groups and Lie algebras, functional analysis, and partial differential equations. I know, it's a lot. But here we'll focus on a specific solution of this nonlinear partial differential equation, namely the Schwarzschild solution. A solution of this partial differential equation is a metric tensor that defines the geometry of the manifold or spacetime. A differential equation can be seen in a very simplistic way as a soda machine. You give it an input, usually money, or a strong kick, depending on your mood, and it spits out an output, usually the desired soda can, depending on its mood. A partial differential equation, like the one we are interested in, works in a similar way. The input in this case is one of its correct mathematical solutions, and the output might be a geometrical interpretation of the result in the manifold we are working with. In the specific case of general relativity, this manifold is four-dimensional, such that three dimensions represent space and one represents time. So each input or solution of Einstein's equation gives a different output or geometry of space-time. The Schwarzschild solution is just one of these possible inputs, the very first one that was discovered. We won't prove that this metric is actually the solution of Einstein field equations, because the calculations are really, really long, but we will analyze and interpret each term. Before anything though, let's see the assumptions used by Schwarzschild to find the specific solution. The first, spherical symmetry. The manifold is assumed to be invariant under the group of rotations SO3. Group of actions SO3 is the set of all possible rotations in 3D space. Imagine spinning a ball around any axis. SO3 describes all the ways you can do that without changing the ball's size or shape. This means that the metric is unchanged under transformations, corresponding to any rotation in 3D. The metric coefficients g mu nu can depend only on the radial coordinate r, in other words, the distance from the center, except for the angular part, which includes the dependence on sine squared theta, arising from the spherical coordinate system. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. The second assumption is no rotation. To talk about this one, we need to define angular momentum first. This is the spin of an object. A spinning top or a rotating planet has angular momentum. It is the way the object keeps spinning unless something stops it. In this metric, the angular momentum is zero which is illustrated in the fact that all the terms not in the diagonal of the matrix are zero, just as g t phi, for example. If this was not the case, there would be something called frame dragging, which by the way is present in the famous Kerr solution. We'll talk more about it later on. The third assumption is radial symmetry. This is a consequence of the spherical symmetry. It means that the radial part of the metric depends only on the magnitude of r, not on direction. The fourth is vacuum. This one may sound a little weird at first, since vacuum is a situation where there is no matter involved. However, the spherical geometry of our manifold is the direct consequence of the spherical geometry of a body at its center, like a planet or a star. So, it is important to notice that this metric solution describes only the curvature outside of the body, not with respect to a point in its interior. 
Mathematically, the energy momentum tensor T mu nu is zero everywhere. This condition simplifies the Einstein field equations a lot. In terms of differential geometry, we say that space-time is Ricci flat. And the last assumption is no electrical charge. As a consequence, the metric G mu nu remains purely gravitational. And there is no electromagnetic field tensor F mu nu. So let us see once again the full version of the Schwarzschild solution. It's important to understand that in differential geometry, the metric's components determine the distances, angles, and casual structures. When the metric tensor g mu nu has only diagonal terms, just like the Schwarzschild solution, it implies certain symmetries and simplifications, both mathematically and physically. Cases with non-zero off-diagonal terms reflect more complex phenomena, such as rotation, non-static spacetimes, or the presence of additional fields, like an electromagnetic field, for example. The fact that the Schwarzschild solution is a diagonal metric indicates that the coordinate basis vectors are orthogonal to each other. Another alternative metric that satisfies Einstein field equations and that is diagonal is the friedman lemaitre robertson walken metric for cosmology, which assumes a homogeneous and isotropic universe. If we had non-zero off-diagonal terms, the coordinate basis vectors would no longer be orthogonal to each other. For example, the Kerr solution has a non-zero term, which introduces coupling between time and angular components. The Kerr metric describes a rotating black hole. The discovery of what we now know as the Schwarzschild solution was very surprising at the time, because the Einstein field equations are a set of complex, highly non-linear partial differential equations. Just to illustrate how complex these equations are, notice the matryoshka dolls effect of trying to express it just in terms of the metric tensor g mu nu. Carl Schwarzschild discovered an exact solution just a few months after Einstein published the final form of his equations. The solution revealed a singularity at the radius 2 gm divided by c squared, which later became known as the Schwarzschild radius. A singularity is a point where something breaks down completely, like dividing by zero in mathematics. In space-time, a singularity is a place where gravity becomes so strong that the usual rules of physics stop working. At the time, the interpretation of this singularity was not understood. The idea that space-time could end, or that of a region where nothing, not even light, could escape it, was just weird. Today, that's what we call a black hole. If you want to know more about it, check out the PDF link in the description below. There we added many more things in more detail so that you guys can learn. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.